as I conclude this sermon series on the Wisdom Pyramid, I read a story about Arthur Dennis Rainey. He tells about leading a particular exercise in his sixth grade Sunday school class. He says he divides the class into three different groups, and he gives each one of the groups a jigsaw puzzle. In group number one, he said he will put all of the jigsaw puzzle pieces on the floor and hand them the box top that has that picture on it to show them what the puzzle needs to look like. Group number one immediately starts putting the puzzle together as they prop up that picture as their guide. Group number two, he dumps all of the puzzle pieces on the floor in front of group number two, and he hands them a box top with a picture on it as well. But what the group doesn't know is the picture on that box belongs to different puzzle pieces. And group number three, he gives a pile of jigsaw puzzle pieces for the same jigsaw puzzle as the other groups, but he doesn't give them a box top at all. And he tells the groups there is only one rule, and that is they cannot talk to one another as they put their puzzles together. Group number one is a little bit frustrated in putting this puzzle together without being able to talk to one another, but they get about their work following the picture in front of them, and they are able to successfully put their puzzle together. Group number two keeps trying to make the puzzle pieces match the picture on the box top that they have, and they get frustrated, and they really want to talk to one another. He says they usually start protesting, and he reminds them, ah, 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 no talking. They look at him with pleading eyes, but you got to help us. And he says after a while, he sees them just give up, and he sees that box top fly across the room in frustration. Group number three, because they have no guide, they just kind of do their own thing. And after a while, they're just lying back on their backs on the floor, talking to themselves quietly in their minds as they wonder, what was this all about? And Dennis Rainey asked, am I a cruel Sunday school teacher? And he says, no, there's a purpose to this exercise. The purpose to the exercise is to remind these young people that all of life is a puzzle piece. Our marriages, our careers, everything in life are puzzle pieces. We have all of the pieces that we need to live the life that God has called us to live. But what we need is a guide to help us put those puzzle pieces in order. My friends, if ever there was a time of chaos in our world where we need a guide to help us put together the puzzle pieces of life in this world, I believe that time is now, which is why I focused this sermon series on wisdom as I seek wisdom for the living of these days when so many things in our world are distracting us and it seems that we are divided as a people. As I think about the lessons in life that give me wisdom, I was reminded of that old poem that many of you might be familiar with. Robert Fulgham's wise and witty, everything I need to know I learned in kindergarten. Well, I believe that we also in the church ought to have a poem that tells us everything we need to know to live a wise and godly life we learned in Sunday school. For like most of you, I learned a tremendous amount of what I know about God's holy scriptures and about who God created me to be through Sunday school. I heard great stories of the famous heroes of the Bible, like Moses in the bulrushes, David and Goliath, Samson and Delilah. I learned the stories of Jesus. I learned my first memory verses. 
and I actually enjoyed going to Sunday school. I was one of those children who, when I missed Sunday school on a particular Sunday, I got upset, and I would go to the Sunday school teacher the following Sunday and ask for the papers from that Sunday school lesson so that I would know what I had missed in Sunday school class. I enjoyed listening to the stories and learning about Jesus. And because I had so much enthusiasm and fun in Sunday school, those lessons stayed with me. Lessons about God's love for me. Lessons about God's love for all people. Lessons about the greatest commandments are to love God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. I learned those things in Sunday school. But the sad reality of life is so many of us learn those basics as children in Sunday school, but as we grow up, we quit going to Sunday school. We quit, we quit attending small groups, thinking that we graduated from our Christian education. Many of us go to Sunday school as children because our parents make us go to Sunday school. And they make us learn those basics of faith, like John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have eternal life. They make us go to Sunday school to learn that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures and restoreth my soul. We learn about Jesus and Zacchaeus. We learn those stories and those parables. But my friends, we need to constantly be reminded of those truths. We need to be reading those stories again over and over again. For as I have told students in Bible study classes that I have taught over the years, God's holy scriptures are like a beautiful diamond. And when we hold it up to the light of Christ, Different truths are reflected to us depending upon where we are in life and what we need to hear at that particular time in life. We need to be reminded of these stories and how they apply to our lives in the here and now. You know, I understand that the most successful professional football coach during the 1980s was Bill Walsh of the San Francisco 49ers. He retired and became a TV commentator, but at one point in his retirement, he did some guest lectures for a couple of football clinics, and he realized that he really missed coaching. So Bill Walsh decided to return co to coaching in some small way. He conducted a series of camps for National Football League quarterbacks and quarterback coaches. And what he did in those camps, I found very interesting. He said he focused on the basics, how to take a snap, how to drop back, how to set up and release. Those basics. I was amazed that professional football players were paying $10,000 a piece for a week-long clinic on things that they learned in the Pee Wee League, things that they had done when they played high school football, things that they knew, like the back of their hand. The New York Jet coach Bruce Coslett was the first to enroll his players, and he said, I quote, the number one promise when a quarterback the number one premise when a quarterback gets to the pro level is that he knows everything. But the problem is his technique slips. They need drills to reinforce it over and over again, and I can't help but think of anyone who is a better teacher and technician than Bill Walsh. You see, even professionals need to relearn to remind themselves or their techniques will slip. 
how much more so for us as followers of Jesus Christ do we need to be reminded of the truth of the Holy Scriptures. We need to be reminded of the basics of our faith, the basics of encouraging one another and lifting one another up, rejoicing with those who rejoice. We need to be reminded of how Jesus told us to deal with conflict by going directly to the person that we have a disagreement with rather than harboring it inside and letting it fester. We're talking with others about it, but never going directly to the person. We need to continually study God's word to apply his word prayerfully in our lives. All of us, adults, children, and youth, need to constantly relearn and reinforce the basics that we learned in the Holy Scriptures, the things that we were taught once upon a time. For I'm sure you're like me. You hear people quote Scripture all of the time. I hear people quote things that they think are in the Scriptures that are really not in the Scriptures. I read a statistic recently that said that 82% of Americans believe that the phrase, God helps those who help themselves, is actually in the Bible. But it's not. It's from Poor Richard's Almanac. 63% of Americans cannot name the four Gospels. And 58% cannot name half or more of the Ten Commandments. We call ourselves followers of Jesus Christ. And yet, so often, we were like the two lawyers that I heard about who were talking about the Bible and Christianity. The first one challenged the others and said, if you are so religious, I'd like to hear you quote the Lord's Prayer. I bet you $10 that you can't quote the Lord's Prayer. And the second one responded, yes, I can. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. And the first lawyer said, Man, I thought you couldn't do it. Here's the $10. <laughs> My dear siblings, the sad truth is that so many followers of Jesus Christ are ignorant when it comes to the Word of God. We don't read the Scriptures ourselves. The only time we hear it read or reflect on it is when we come into a public worship service and hear someone else read the scriptures to us. Now, let me be clear. Reading the scriptures is not about gaining the facts and the knowledge so that we can debate with one another about the words in the scripture. It's not about saying who has memorized the most passages of scripture are being able to say the reference of where you found a particular verse the value of reading the scriptures is so that it can lead us to live a wise and godly life the passage that we read from psalm 1 today tells us that in order to follow in the way of the wise and the godly, we need to meditate on God's holy word day and night. The epistle to James tells us that we are not just to hear the words. Knowing the words is not enough. We need to put the words into action to allow them to penetrate our lives. And that can only happen when we meditate on them deeply and make them a part of who we are so that we can do the wise things in this world. As a great theologian, Karl Barth, it's noted as saying, we need to carry the Bible in one hand and the newspaper in the other so that we can apply the Holy Scripture's truths to the world that we live in, whether it's a question of how to make our relationships with one another better, or whether it's a question of how to respond faithfully to the social injustices that are going on in our world today. We need a guide, a guide to help us as a people to encourage us in this life of faith. And one thing that helps us 
in reading the scriptures and understanding the scriptures is having a body of other believers around us, mentors and coaches, confidants who can encourage us in this life of faith as we read the Holy Scriptures, which brings me back to the importance of those Sunday school classes, the small group lessons that we have. For as you think back over your life, the coaches and the mentors and the teachers that you have are people who have shaped you and helped you to make choices in your life, how much more so for our life of faith. In the life of faith, there are no Lone Ranger Christians. God has granted us this beautiful community to walk with each other and to help each other understand the complexities of the Holy Scriptures one of the primary purposes of Sunday school classes and small group gatherings is to be a place of fellowship where we help and encourage and admonish and support one another in this life of faith. Sometimes we're the one leading and instructing, and sometimes we're the one who has questions and doubts and who are seeking guidance from the others in the group. Now, some of you may not recognize the name Max Perkins. Perkins died in 1947, but he exercised enormous influence over the reading habits of millions of readers. Perkins was not a writer. Perkins was the top editor at Charles Scribner's Publishing Company. He served as the personal editor for F. Scott Fitzgerald, for Ernest Hemingway, for Thomas Wolfe, as well as for less famous writers who wrote works such as The Yearling, From Here to Eternity, and other great works. Max Perkins, it is said, could take a manuscript and know what to cut out of it, what to retain, and what to change. And all of the famous American writers who worked with Perkins would eventually agree with him that his way was consistently the best way for their books. Now, these were great writers. We know that. But their writing became better because of their editor. Max Perkins made them better writers. Joining a Sunday school class or a small group for discussion is the same for our faith. It helps us to talk about our faith, to talk about the scriptures and what they mean in our lives, to share our witness with one another. I started the service today by reminding you that Ann Jessup and Austin Lippert are leading a small group study on helping us identify our biases. I want to remind you of that. And I want to remind you that in our Connection newsletter, you have a listing every time the Connection comes out of small group classes that are meeting and ways that you can engage with one another to grow in your faith and to understand the Holy Scriptures. My dear friends, let's not underestimate that the Holy Scriptures are our daily bread and we understand them better as we talk about them in community and meditate on them day and night. In McCall's magazine, our, there was an article several years ago. It was a story about Denzel Washington, and they described him as one of Tinseltown's most sought-after leading men. Denzel Washington in that article said, My priorities are very clear. God, family, work, football. In that order. How did he get the arrangement of those priorities, he was asked? The interviewer said, Mr. Washington, your father was a Pentecostal preacher. Did he inspire you? Denzel Washington replied, 
As a boy, I would regularly sit in on my father's sermons. My father would read the Holy Scriptures to us in our home. I miss his presence and his influence. He and my mother gave me a moral center that has never gone away. You keep building off of it as long as you live, and I hope I can pass it on to my children. I share my father's spiritual commitment to reading the Holy Scriptures on a regular basis, for I believe in the Bible, and I believe that every event in my life comes from God. My friends, if we want to live a wise and godly life, the psalmist encourages us, meditate on God's holy word both day and night. May it be true for you and for me, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.